Howdy, just out here doing the seasonal maintenance on the mowers, changing the oil, cleaning the air filters, sharpening the blades, just going over them, make sure that they're good to go for the season. Did mine, or doing mine, did the neighbors already. And uh, it's time for coffee, so I thought, well, I'll bring you guys over here, and I will show you, I told you I would show you a little more detail how I perked my coffee, and uh, so that's what I intend to do. Alrighty, back after a brief intermission, I couldn't, I couldn't find my uh, my e-cig, and so uh, I, I also refer to this as my pacifier, if that gives you any idea, so... Had to find out where I hit it on myself. So anyway, now we're ready to start on coffee again. So what I did is I've got nine cups of filtered water in in there. Nice ants. That's okay. They won't they won't come around this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Coleman 553 or 533 dual fuel stove. I love this stove. I couldn't recommend it anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and get it fired up. Using my Maritac Peanut XL lighter. Let me grab my thing over here. Now, if you've ever made percolated coffee and didn't use a filter with, you know, just regular old coffee grounds, um, then, you know, those will make their way through those little holes. So, using a filter is highly recommended, but the issue is on that is uh, the filters that they make for them are expensive and to be honest they don't do a real super great job so I'm going to show you a little hack that I do and take the top piece off and I've got myself a regular coffee filter nothing special it's just a regular coffee filter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it up about three times. There's two folds there. I'm going to fold it one more time here. And make it about like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of scissors. I'm just going to take just the tip off of that. Just the tip. Not much. You know, the tip never hurt anybody. So, Anyway, that will give us a hole in the middle. And ideally, you want that hole to be a little smaller than what you're going around. So that way it'll be a tight fit. Then what I do is, I know I had my hands in the filter in the way. I just easily kind of work it down around that so it stays as tight as possible. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to crump the sides of that around I'm gonna grab my coffee yeah trying to get it pretty even there I've got my coffee here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour my coffee in around there trying not to get any down the stem or nothing and I've got my coffee in there. Put my scoop back. And then what I'm gonna do is just like this, I'm gonna put the, uh, no, I'm not gonna put the lid on it. I'm gonna bring this over. I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna set it down. But as I set it down, I'm gonna work this filter down. I want that filter to be down inside. So I'm just gonna kinda spin it. Work it around till I got all the filter started, and then I'm just going to set it down in there. And before I put my top down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fingers, and I'm just going to push down to get that filter all the way to the bottom of that dealio that's holding it. And I'm just simply going to take, put the top on like that, and there we go. We are ready to perk. So, bring this back over. Put it on top. And then just let it do its thing. So, 
I'm not going to record the entire video while I'm warming the water up. It does take a little bit. There's nine cups of water there. So what I'm going to do is I will bring you back whenever it started to perk. Okay, so as you can see, it started to perk. I'm going to turn the flame down a little. You don't have to have the flame crazy the entire time. Once it starts perking, you can back off the heat a little. There's two ways that you can determine the strength of your coffee. You can either keep track of how much coffee you used and how long it takes to get to the de desired strength that you like, or you can get used to looking at the color of the coffee as it's perking and you'll know your strength roughly that way. That's the method I use. I've never made a bad pot of coffee doing that. Uh, I don't like my coffee. I am not a cowboy coffee kind of person. Um, I like my coffee to have flavor. To me, if you put too much coffee in or you use some stupid kind of coffee like all the popular coffees out there, Black Rifle and whatever, Death Wish coffee, whatever, I'm not into that. Homie don't play that. I like my coffee to have an actual taste of flavor, like coffee, not like motor oil. And so uh, I like my coffee again. I like it to be there. I like it to, you know, a nice, bold, rich flavor. But I don't want it so overpowering that I can't get the, the good flavors of the coffee as well. So that's why I'm a big fan of the 100% Colombian coffee. You always hear me talking about that. That's because I love it. It's the closest thing that I can find to Thomas coffee without paying the Thomas coffee price. So, I love Thomas coffee. I, I will go to my grave saying that's the best coffee ever made. But um, I will, I'll, I have no problem drinking Folgers Colombian. I love it as well. But again, the trick is not making it so strong that you ruin the good taste, the good flavors of it. So, I'll come back after this is perked for a little bit when it's about the strength that I desire and uh, wrap the video up. All right, that should be somewhere around my desired strength. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a little bonus here. <laughs> Why waste a good flame? I'm going to pull the coffee off. Make sure you don't touch the metal of that because it will burn the hell out of you. And I'm going to replace it with a couple of cups of water here. Turn my heat back up a little bit so we can get some water boiling. And uh, I'm going to make me some oatmeal real quick. I haven't eaten eating today so my bc truck cup i think he sent me that in 2016 and i've been using it ever since it's the only coffee cup i use and uh so i got a piece of a pot holder here probably a good idea if you uh if you hold on to the the top there and keep it held shut while you pour your coffee and you don't want to go to town pouring your coffee because you could still get crunchies in it. So you just kind of be a little easy with pouring your coffee. I will give you a little tip here in a second. I've got my coffee poured. I'm gonna take my spoon. And I'm gonna lay it up on top like that. Boy, those ants are like, hey man, I smell sugar. Too bad, my sugar. So anyway, set your uh, spoon on top because if you do anything else before you get your coffee all stirred up and ready to go, uh, you're going to run into an issue that where that spoon is going to be so freaking hot. So, got my Stanley Dermis here. And that's where I will pour the excess coffee. You leave my coffee alone. Going to be a problem up in here. Pour the rest of the coffee. Again, be easy with it. Don't go crazy. Watch as you're pouring. That way, if you start to see specks going in, stop pouring. That means uh, that means it got past your filter, the grinds. Okay, that's good. Put our lid on our thermos here, and that will be plenty hot by the time I'm ready for it. Okay, I will see you back in a moment when that's boiling. All right, we got a boil started there, so I'm just going to throw in my oats. And of course, I forgot the spoon. 
I'm going to go grab a spoon and I'm going to tend to this. And, uh, you know, it's oats. So cook it about five minutes or until it looks right. And you should be good to go. I will see you in a moment when we are good to go. Okay, those oats look like they're good to go. So I'm going to turn the burner off. I'm going to slide this to the side just a little bit so it can cool off. Yeah, I'm going to bring my bowl down here. Yes, I do like a little bit of sugar with my oatmeal. you got to have tons of sugar, otherwise it's just bleh. So, anyway, so got tons of sugar and a fair helping of cinnamon down in there. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure you've made oatmeal before. Not, uh, not too complicated of a process, I don't believe. But, um, anyway, I could not recommend that little 533 dual fuel stove any more than I do. I mean, um, to me, that is the end all be all when it comes to whether it's camping, whether it's prepping, whatever the case may be. Is it big to do big meals on? No, absolutely not. You're gonna want one of their larger dual burner stoves for that, which are great options as well. I got one that was gifted to me. I think it's a 413 or something like that. Um, and it's, uh, I, I started to rebuild it and I need to continue and finish rebuilding that so it's good to go. And uh, it works fine. It just, it des it really needs gone through and uh, seals checked out, rust cleaned up, stuff like that. Wouldn't hurt it to be, uh, you know, have a fresh coat of paint on it. It's, it's old, it is old, old. But you can't beat them. They are just absolutely timeless. They are priceless. And they're reliable. I mean, they are so reliable. I love any Coleman product, in my opinion, as far as their white gas products. They're some of the highest reliability you can get. Yeah. Got a cowboy on a motorcycle, it sounds like. I, I'm, I'm sure he was doing the he posted 30 mile per hour there so well at least till he hit second gear so anyway um there you go oats and coffee now you know what my lunch is today i'm gonna go eat my lunch on the inside that's a little less ante and then i'll be back and finish the mowers uh, well mine i've got the other one done get my mower finished so i can get the yard mode so anyway i hope you all have a blessed and wonderful day Shalom.